I was working construction in the UK. Um, I was repairing dump trucks, uh, small dump trucks on building sites for a company. And that company went bankrupt. And then I was looking in the newspaper for another job. And I saw there was a job that was uh, advertised in the at Lotus, uh, in the Cortina department. I went there and um, sure enough I got the job and I wasn't actually building the uh, Lotus Cortinas I was uh, basically in the parts department and all I would do was wheel a little cart around and fill up the bins of all the people that were working assembling the cars. The manager came up to me and he said to me I want you to move down into the Lotus Alain department well, I said, oh, I don't know about that because the land department was a lot busier than the Cortina department. So I decided I was going to go out and get another job and just leave Lotus. Well, the manager said, there's a job over at Team Lotus as a shop boy. And I said, oh, that's kind of interesting. I went over it and I was totally obviously nervous, but anyway, it all happened that I got a job there. And that was in 64 it was. We had two rather large transporters that we transported the Lotus Cortinas around in, and I would uh, look after keeping those things stocked up, as well as working on the cars and keeping the shop clean and so forth. One of the mechanics left, he was looking after Jim Clark's Cortina. I'd improved so much, they asked me if I wanted to look after Jim Clark's Lotus Cortina. When I was looking after Clark's car, it was a real uh, pleasure to be part of that. Uh, he was a great, absolute fabulous guy to work with. Um, and he was a really down-to-earth person. I, uh, like I said, he wasn't full of himself. He, he wasn't demanding or anything like that. He, he wasn't a prima donna or anything like that. He was just a nice, nice guy and a fabulous driver. What you have to remember about the Lotus Cortina in the early days is there, was, there wasn't much you could change. Um, you, the best thing you could do to make the car handle better is put new tires on it. Um, there was no camber change or ride height change or anything like that. It was it was it it, it what the car didn't allow you to do that. Um, so it was it, it it really you couldn't really do too much. And he just knew how to drive the car so well that you didn't really need to change things. You might have to, you might be able to adjust the roll bar or the rear roll bar or the front roll bar. I don't think you could even change the front roll bar to be quite truthful with you. But it, it was just basically the car was the car. And you know, we'd switch from rain tires to dry tires. I think there were green spots and, and yellow spots was the, determined what, what the, I think the dry tires were, the yellow spots and the green tires were the wets. So they sent us to uh, the States. I've always wanted to come to America, but I never thought I'd ever get the chance. We did a 12-hour a, a race at Marlboro, which I think is in Virginia, I think. Arlington, Virginia, I think. But um, it, was, it was a fabulous time because I'd never done a 12-hour race before and it was exciting and I don't think Clark was driving my car at that time. Jackie Stewart was driving it. What happened is uh, we had a failure with an oil line coming off, a sort of malfunction in the hose that was was in the oil going, to, going from the oil cooler to the engine and that's what happened. And uh, But as Having said that, I mean, it was, we had a lot of fun. I mean, it was a great, great, great time for me and I, I just enjoyed it tremendously.